often it shows us that Africa is only independent on papers. Now the question is, you know, there are other countries like let, we are going to the, the Middle East and, and of course some countries in Africa and even in America uh, that actually do not, uh, uh, um, uh, actually criminalizes this act, you know. So the, the question is, why uh, so hard? Because here we're not talking about who should be, uh, who should be what or whatsoever. We want to understand the relationship uh, that the World Bank has in the internal affairs of a sovereign country. Because if we are talking today, we want to see how uh, Africa can engage with the, the, the global world on equal terms. You know, equal terms in the sense that African politicians and other stakeholders should be able to, to be intentional about how they negotiate with external partners or international partners. You bear with me that and uh, you and Mr. Ekane just hi highlighted uh, that uh, it is a, a moment of a narrative shift, uh, both in Africa and uh, the world at large. But then, can we uh, work in uh, uh, Silas? No, we can. We must work with others. So, how can we now engage with the others? So, the question I'm giving you again, uh, Mr. Paseka Faromele, is: What is the place of the World Bank? And of course, in uh, uh, maybe uh, 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 suspending, uh, because actually you said the, the law is very uh, critical. And of course, when you look at the decision of the World Bank, other pundits will also say that it's really critical by, by saying that uh, it is going to hold new funding. Whereas we know that countries for now, that's the, the institution and others that countries have been actually uh, soliciting funds for, for development agendas. So how is this, uh, a decision by the World Bank uh, going to affect Uganda and of course and how is it further straining the existing relationship between Uganda and of course countries that are actually shareholders in the World Bank group. Thank you Clarice. You know um, it, 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 it's quite uh, mind-blowing when you look at what has been happening in the world right now. I look at, uh, from a sporting point of view, from a sporting point of departure, I look at what Saudi Arabia has been doing recently and uh, the reaction from the rest of the world. Um, in the Middle East, a lot of countries have these stern laws against homosexuality. They say that you will be arrested for being in a relationship with someone. You'll be, but these are countries that were evil. Just last year, if I'm not mistaken, there was a World Cup, a football World Cup that happened in a country which illegalized um, homosexual relationships. But that country, it continued to have a successful tournament. And right now, it's getting to a point where it's receiving more and more attention because it's able to attract more people, be, uh, more football players because of its financial stability economic and financial stability what that tells you is our problems are primarily because of where we find ourselves from a socio-economic point of departure as a continent so our laws the laws that we can put in place become heavily dependent on on how uh, we align them with people with with organizations such as the world bank so you cannot be totally independent of the world bank you are heavily dependent and relying on external funders for you to have a functional country while in the middle east a number of these countries are able have become self-sustained so what that means is that they are able to sustain themselves and function without the help necessarily as you said we cannot exist in silos but without necessarily over dependence on external features so that means that they are able to have laws in place because of how economically and politically strong they have become that are not dependent on what others can say from the outside there were protests um, before the world cup there were protests people were saying this is an oppressive regime it is not enabling of uh, people to express themselves how they want to it is not enabling for people to exist for being who they want to be those protests didn't go anywhere. There was a World Cup. There were people who were, people went from all over the world to the World Cup. It was successful, that World Cup. 
but you know why it's because of this new uh ability to self-sustain and not be overly reliant on external powers as our country currently is and that is why we can be held hostage as a continent we can be held hostage by external powers and we see it even now in 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 in, in in uh, uh, what do you call in Niger, we see it even now in, in, in Mali, we see it in Burkina Faso, we see all these countries that the ex there's external people who are trying to influence how these people guide themselves. But because they have strong leadership, which is, you know, this is leadership which has proven itself to be quite resilient. And as I will always emphasize, I do not necessarily agree with coup d'etat and, and whatnot, but from what these leaders are currently saying and the points that they are making, if you can see how strong they've uh, decided to, 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 to make themselves by just centering independence um, away from France specifically and opening alternative routes and other people to work with. It is very difficult, it is not easy, and it will not be easy. But by being able to make sure that these people try to send that the population of the country instead of themselves as politicians and center corruption in so that they can continue to benefit and the West can come in and influence them by paying them large amounts of money so that they can steal even a lot more from them. Then we see that these people are, are leaders that the populations in these countries are quite happy about. From what we are seeing currently, these are people that are able to say we are going to present these laws, we are going to present these policies, we are going to do one, two, and three for our people. And the people seem relatively uh, confident in their leadership. Why? Because these are not people who are not who are who continue to be over reliant on the on, on external uh, influences, specifically their former colonizers. They are trying to bake to 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 break their ties with them to the best of their abilities. If you are still overly dependent on on your external uh, uh, on on your former colonizer, none of this would be even possible. We wouldn't be seeing what we are currently seeing in the rest of the continent of Africa. Thank you, Clarice. The Paseke uh, Paseka family, I beg your pardon. Uh, just to remind those of you tuning in, that this is the Pan African debate on the Pan African Television Africa Media. And today we are analyzing uh, the anti-gay law enacted by the parliament in Uganda, looking at the implications and of course uh, relating